Good morning, everyone, and welcome to March's edition of Lynn Likes. Today we're going to talk about color and how it's written into our storybooks. I hope that you'll join me for a read aloud, Bear Sees Colors, and a little bit of conversation about the different books that we have at the Graves Library that do focus on colors in our world. I know when I started pulling books a couple of weeks ago in anticipation of talking to all of you, I found that we have many, many books on colors and they're so enjoyable, especially at this time of the year when we've had probably our fill of snowy days, the color white and the color brown with all of our tree branches being bare of leaves and now we're seeing exposed uh, dirt and other brown and beige colors in our world. So I know I'm looking forward to our days of color when our flowers start blooming and the trees start, start popping their green leaves. But before we get going to our read aloud, I thought you could take a look behind me. I have a variety of books from Pete the Cat to Eric Carle and author Lois Ellert. And she is a, a favorite of mine with especially this book, Planting a Rainbow. I even included a few balloons for everybody to enjoy, which they're a little off to the side here, but make me smile when I'm looking at all that color. And down below I have Where is the Green Sheep? All of these books I'm going to leave on display for now, but they are here at the Graves Library for you to come and check out. And they are books that talk oftentimes about many colors on one page. And when children are starting to look at books and learn about colors, it's been my experience to start with a book that has one color per page spread so that a child can really begin to focus on, oh, that is green, or oh, that's, that's blue. And I will show you how the progression of these color books gets a little bit more involved with many colors on the, on the two page spread, which again would be for an older child that has definitely learned their, their colors. But while they're still learning, um, sometimes our board books have that uh, one page per color, or we, off, we have several books that are just about one color. We have one that's called What is Green, which is just a, a fun book to look through. So for now, I think what I'd like to do is start with our book called Bear Sees Colors. And this is a book that I enjoy for many, many reasons, as I am a fan of author Karma Wilson, and the illustrator is Jane Chapman. I'll show you our back cover, lots of colors, fun animals doing a dance. And we'll thank our publisher, the vibrant end papers with polka dots, another favorite of mine. And we want to say a special thank you to Scholastic. <clears throat> Bear sees colors. All right. Everybody comfortable and ready to hear a story? Mouse and Bear are walking. They are chitter-chatter talking. So much for them to do. And the bear sees... Yes, they're dragonflies. What color are those dragonflies? Blue, and the bear sees blue. Blue flowers by the trail, blueberries, blue pale. Blue, blue everywhere. Can you spy blue with bear? What do you see that's blue in that picture? Mm-hmm, I see fish. I see mouse holding maybe a, a blue flower, corn flower, a blue pail. Yes, you're right, lots of blue water everywhere. Along the trail hops hare. Howdy ho there, mouse and bear. Hare points up ahead and the bear sees red. Red blossoms, red cherries, red juicy raspberries, red, red everywhere. Can you spy red with bear? 
What do you spy in these pictures? Flowers, a watering can, red birds, or cardinals. You've got good eyes. Badger's at the pond with his old galoshes on. Look there, Badger bellows. And the bear sees, I think you guessed it, yellow. Drippy, sticky, oh so yummy honeycombs with yellow honey. Yellow, yellow everywhere. Can you find it? Just like bear. Take a good look. Bears love honey. Do you like honey? Yeah, I do too. Gophers out with mole. They are on a little stroll. Bear spots them by the stream and the bear sees, what do you think? I heard green. Look at all that green. Green mint for making tea, green and tasty sweet peas, green, green everywhere. Can you spy green with bear? I'll hold the book right in there. What do you see? You can call it out. Good for you. I see green apples. Did you notice that in the grass? They were hiding. So Raven, Owl, and Wren lay a picnic in the glen. The friends all gather around, and the friends see... What do you think? I'm not sure. Brown. There's our brown. Chocolate cake, brown and sweet. Brown cookies, such a treat. Brown eyes, brown hair, friendly, fluffy, brown. See all that brown? Mm-hmm. You all have some good eyes. Very observational. Bear, colors, colors everywhere. Can you find colors just like bear? Who sees the yellow galoshes? The rain boots. Mm -hmm, me too. I see red. There's that watering can. What else do you see that's red? The tulips and the flowers. How about blue? What do you see? Right down here. I see blue too. And I'll move the page. And bring it in close. How about the blue sky? Excellent. Good for you. The end. Bear sees colors. This was a fun story. Very interactive. You really got involved with that and found all kinds of, of the colors that we had talked about and probably even some others that we, that we hadn't. So there we go. Bear sees colors. The next book that I found on the shelf was called Monsters Love Colors. Red, yellow, blue. Monsters Love Colors. And this is written by and illustrated, written and illustrated by Mike Austin. Here's the back cover, all kinds of splashy artwork. Let's see who our publisher is. It's HarperCollins Publishers, so thank you to them. And this book tells us that, did you know that monsters love to scribble, scribble, mix, dance, and wiggle? I'm going to open up just a few pages to show you. Here we go. Monsters love to scribble, scribble, mix, dance, and wiggle. Lots of different colors, red, yellow, blue. Mix, mat, mash, and splash. Squish, mish, and squash. Mish, mish, squish, squish. Mish, mish, squish, squish. Do you like to do that with your artwork? I know I do. Mix and mash the colors. Monsters love new colors. And it says favorite. 
Why do you think the yellow is holding up a favorite crayon of yellow? Because he's yellow, absolutely. Red is the color of roar and snore and more, more, more. My favorite color is red. My favorite color is yellow. Yellow is the color of prowl and howl and growl, growl, growl. Oh! Lots of words on these pages in the color yellow, rather than pictures like we had seen in Bear Sea's colors. My favorite color is blue. Blue is the color of scribble and dribble and nibble, nibble, nibble. He's nibbling his blue crayon. He just loves it so much, but don't do that. What new favorite color can we make for you? And now we're going to start mixing and mashing just by using three colors, red, yellow, and blue. Orange. Scribble, scribble, mix, dance, and wiggle. Mixing red and yellow makes orange. Have you tried doing that yet with your crayons or your paints? I hope so. It's tons of fun to see a new color emerge. And what new favorite color can we make for you? Green. Okay, let's see how they do that. Stribble, dribble, mix and dance. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Mixing yellow and blue makes green. You'll have to try this sometime when you get out your paints or your chalk or your crayons. And what new favorite color can we make for you? Purple. Hey, buddy. I was supposed to say purple. <laughs> the monsters are talking to each other. Here we go. What colors do you guess would make purple? Mm-hmm. Got it. Scribble, scribble, mix, dance, and wiggle. Mixing red and blue makes purple. How fun. I love mixing colors. And what new favorite color can we make for you? Red, yellow, blue, orange, green, purple? Hmm. I know. What do you think they're going to mix for him? That's a good guess. Super tropical mega monster rainbow swirl with raspberry on top. Wow. Scribble, scribble, drip, splash, dribble, mix, mash, squish, squash, dance, and wiggle. Round and around and around. He wants raspberry on top. Super duper. Red, yellow, blue, orange, green, purple, rainbow. Monsters love new colors. They had a blast. I think that was a great story. Full of all kinds of action. And he even wrote the end. That was a fun story. I liked all the action in that. And maybe when you get a chance to mix your paints or swirl around with your crayons, you could scribble, scribble, dash, dash, mash, mash, and come up with a new color. That would be great. Okay. So our last book of the morning is a small book. And I'm going to pull it right in here so you can see. The Little Green Island with a Little Red House. A book of Colors and Critters mm -hmm. by Sharon Lovejoy. She's the author and the illustrator and the publisher is Down East Books. A special thank you to them. And she's dedicated this book to all of the people in her life who love nature. Yes, she's a very good artist and uses a lot of nice colors in her drawings. On a little green island stands a little red house. Mm 
with a little orange cat and a little gray mouse, a little rose moth, a little beige bat who sleeps upside down on a little hat rack. You see him? There he is. And beneath the shaggy edge of a little purple rug, it has a roly-poly, polka-dotty, little copper bug. The little green island has a little chartreuse frog who searches for his supper on a little mossy log. Have you all heard of the color chartreuse? It's a more brilliant green-blue, which that frog is supposed to have. It has a leafy little peach tree and a little mocha mole, a little okra cricket who peeks out from a hole. I'm hearing new words in this story besides the names of colors that are red, blue, green, yellow. We're hearing things like mocha, which is brown, mm -hmm. or okra, which is a yellow. How fun to have different names for colors. It has a little patch of violets in a shady little glen and a little russet fox with three kits inside her den. So we were talking about purple in our other book. Another word for purple, a lighter shade of purple, would be violet. Russet fox instead of red fox is a little hint of orange. I know, I, you're learning something new with different vocabulary. The little green island has a little lilac shell and a little cobalt bird with a voice just like a bell. So tell me, looking at that picture, what is the color of cobalt? cobalt? A bird that is cobalt has blue feathers. Absolutely. It has a little olive snail with a little slimy tail who slithers through the forest on a slippery, shiny trail. There's our snail. He's olive. He's a mixture of green and brown. It's olive green, probably some yellow. The little green island has a little khaki toad, a little yellow-sided snake who basks along the road. It has a little azure butterfly. And you tell me, looking at this picture of the toad, what color would you think khaki? Beige or tan? Yes. Nicely done. And a little white striped skunk who spends all her days in a little plum tree's trunk. She has the perfect home. She's nestled into a hole in the trunk of the tree and probably gets lunch frequently with those plums that fall to the ground. Great place to live. The little green island has a little scarlet newt who lives all alone in a little rubber boot. Yes. Scarlet is red, definitely a very bright, vibrant red. It has a little chestnut chipmunk and a little saffron spider who bundles up her little eggs and keeps them close beside her. The little green island has a little black rumped bee, a little pink 
tongued porcupine who hangs out in a tree. This island sounds fascinating, doesn't it? And in a little silver tide pool by the sparkling sapphire sea, the little green island has a someone just like me. Can you see yourself? I bet you can. Fare thee well. The end. Thank you everyone for joining me here at Graves for Lynn Likes, all about colors and how authors and illustrators pull together delightful books for us to enjoy uh, with many different uh, approaches to writing them. And I hope that I have the opportunity to see you come in and I'll leave them out on the shelf so you can pick one up and, and enjoy any of the ones that I didn't have the opportunity to read. Thank you again for joining me. I'll see you here next month for Lynn Likes. And I believe we're going to be talking about shapes and how authors and illustrators depict those in our storybooks. So I hope you have a good day today. Take care and bye for now.